everybody and good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Very excited to uh, be with you here this morning to talk about points of interest and how they can enhance your indoor maps. And I'll start off with the introduction. My name is John Hodel with CloudPoint Geospatial and I hit up our indoors team here at CloudPoint and a little bit more information about our company here, we are a GIS services provider uh, specializing in, in GIS services for a variety of customers. Um, we do data collection and GIS services uh, at all that is uh, delivered on the Esri platform. We're an Esri business partner and also happy to be one of their ArcGIS indoors uh, specialty providers. Uh, we are not a software vendor, um, but we do provide different various uh, maps and apps for our, our clients. Um, so we will uh, get into some things here and talk about um, the indoor mapping and specifically focus on the points of interest. And what I'm going to show you today is GIS based. It's all GIS based points of interest for indoor mapping and facility management. Um, everything I show you will be on Esri's ArcGIS platform and we will um, also get to look at ArcGIS Pro and we'll, we'll uh, show some demonstrations here in a minute. So as a high level uh, overview here, we'll talk about uh, just kind of what points of interest are. We'll look at required information uh, for choosing, how to help choose those POIs. And then also we'll talk about different categories that, you know, how you can break up those POIs into the different categories and then editing and updating those POIs. Of course, uh, that's always important to be able to know um, how to keep those current because we know they can change you know, quite often. And then lastly, we'll finish up with some demonstrations in ArcGIS, including ArcGIS indoors and show you how those points of interest can be useful. Okay, so first of all, uh, what are points of interest specifically? What we're looking at, they have to have an X, Y, and in this case, what I'm gonna show you today, they do need a Z location because when we're working with indoor mapping and we're talking about being floor aware, uh, it's important to have that Z location as a part of that. We want it to be uh, floor aware. So it's gonna have to know which level it's on. And I'll, as I'll explain later with routing networks, that Z component is very critical. So that's very important for us. Um, they also, uh, things need to be considered as far as scale levels, you know, or is the point of interest permanent or fixed? Here, the different levels to consider. If I'm looking at a map level, I'm, I'm looking at maybe a, a state or a country. I'm looking, uh, you know, looking at a high level, I might be looking at a city as a point of interest or a mountain or a park, you know, things that are, are large scale in that fact. Uh, or at more of a site level as we're zoomed in, say, for example, I'm looking at, at uh, a campus, then a point of interest might be a tree, a monument, a manhole, something on that campus that, that, is, um, that I'm using as a point of interest. Or uh, if we take it to the next level down, we look at a building level. Now my points of interest might change a little bit. Now I'm interested in even more detail when I'm looking at just a building. I'm, I'm breaking it down into fixtures that are plumbing fixtures, electrical fixtures, um, and things like a control panel. I wanna start to dive down into more detail and like a control panel might be my point of interest. Then if I wanna take it one level further and we're gonna zoom in even farther inside of the building and we're looking at a specific asset uh, maybe another point of interest on that asset could be a button on the control panel. So you can see how it breaks it down into more uh, level of detail with each time. And so my points of interest might change based on my scale level or based on my application. And lastly, I like the quote, the POIs are the nerve endings of a routing and wayfinding nervous system. So if you think about that, the routing and wayfinding of, of facilities is, is going to be the network, you know, components and what all's connected, all is connecting all the dots. But the point of interest is the end or the, the nerve ending of that system. 
So what's required with our point of interest as we have those throughout the facility? Well, there's a few things um, that are required. Number one, location, we got to have position, we got to have an X, Y, and in this case, a Z location of that point of interest. We also need a unique point ID. I can't stress the importance of this enough, having a unique PID so that point can be, um, it can be categorized, it can be edited and updated through the GIS system. Um, you know, it can be uh, useful for the routing. So it's very important that we have that ID. And then a category, okay? We can't, uh, we could, we just ha could have all our points of interest lumped into one group, but that doesn't help us. We need to categorize them. So we're gonna break those down in different categories. And we're gonna touch on that a little bit later on how to choose some of those categories and how they can be useful. And then beneath that, we're gonna look at subcategories. You know, what, what can be broken at, you have a large family category and how can it be broken down even further? And then lastly, a floor or level ID is a requirement for our points of interest for this. Uh, for these purposes, we've got to have those separated by floors. I don't want to go to my map and look at floor number two and then see all of my points throughout the whole building. It's just not going to be intuitive. It's not going to make sense. So choosing points of interest. So this is something I kind of made up on my own, but I find it helpful for me when I go to uh, decide whether to include something as a point of interest in my map. Um, so I, I use the word, the acronym PROVED, P-R-O-V-E-D to help me remember this, PROVED. So questions I ask when I'm deciding on a point of interest, should this meet the criteria of, of a point of interest? Number one, performance, okay, or I'm sorry, permanence. Permanence, how permanent is this point? Is it going to stay in the same location for an extended period of time? Um, in this case, for me, for a point of interest, I, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weigh heavily the permanence of that particular item. So as we talk about asset management, if it's a, if it's a computer, it's going to stay in that room for a while. I, I don't know if I would want to include that with, as a point of interest. Um, if it's something that's relatively mobile, it could move from room to room. I may not want to include that. Um, another thing with the R, routability, okay? Does this, um, does this need routable uh, directions to it? Uh, so that's where I'm trying to decide, okay, how important is this? Is somebody gonna need to find it? That's something else I consider on whether I include it as a point of interest. Operability, okay, so does this, item or does this feature, does it, uh, is it operable? Does it require, you know, maintenance? Can it be turned on and off? If it's broken, how important is that to me? So that's another thing I might want to ask myself is operability. Does it need inspected? Okay. Does it need uh, assessed once in a while or checked on? Those are, um, that's an important thing to consider on whether I include it as a point of interest. Another thing, the V, valuable. Okay. How valuable is it right? That's important. So we, we want to know if the more valuable something is, the more likely I'm going to include it as a point of interest, because that's something that obviously what we're trying to accomplish here with indoor mapping facility management, we're trying to save time and money, but we're also trying to maximize our investment. So if I've got, you know, tens of thousands of dollars into a piece of equipment, I want that as one of my POIs. That's something I'm going to be very interested in maintaining. Another one with the E is it uh, utilized in emergency situations? Okay, a perfect example would be the, the shutoff. Okay, let's say there's a gas shutoff and there's an emergency, maybe there's a fire and I have the fire department responding and they need to know where is the gas shutoff. That definitely falls as a POI with the gas shutoff because required in emergencies. Okay, and the last one, it would be dependencies. What I mean by that is what else is dependent upon that point, okay? so. Is that point dependent on another system? Is that point uh, a part of another system? So dependencies, let's take, for example, a light switch, okay? The switch maybe in itself, it, it doesn't need to be necessarily inspected maybe, or uh, it's not valuable by any means, a switch in itself, but it's part of a complete system. So the switch is dependent upon the system and the system is dependent upon the switch. So that's important as well. So looking at some of these examples in my thinking cloud here, a door, well, you know, the door itself, not very valuable. 
Um, I, you know, uh, operable, yeah, it opens or closes, but you know, overall, maybe not. But when I think about, wait a minute, how important is a door in an emergency? That's very important in, in an emergency where people need to get out or emergency folks need to get in. The door is very important. So having ex, uh, accessibility points like a door would be important. A standing desk, I've got one here I'm using right now, right here in front of me, a couple hundred dollars, not super valuable. It could be moved from office to office, probably not something I'm gonna include in my points of interest. But a shut off we touched on earlier, absolutely. How about a bench, a park bench that's in the landscaping? Well, how permanent is it? How valuable is it? How is it important? Do I need, do I want to include it with my routing when I guide people to it? If, you know, if your answer is yes to some of those questions, maybe we'd want to include that, uh, but maybe not. Uh, lighting fixture, another example, it's, it's permanent. Um, it may not be very valuable, but it is permanent and it's something that could go bad. And it's also uh, dependent. It's part of a larger system. So that too uh, might be something to consider, the lighting fixture. How about a fire extinguisher? Again, not super valuable, but definitely something that needs inspected and definitely something that's utilized in emergencies. So fire extinguisher should be a great example to include as a POI. I wanna talk about categories, okay? Categories are something that's very, um, this, you know, at the high level, where does this point of interest fall within these groups? Okay, these first four that we're looking at, people, safety and security, retail, places and things. These are the, the basic ones that come along with the ArcGIS indoors information model as their, uh, Esri's point of interest categories. Okay, I added the last couple uh, on my own, knowing that these are things that I've seen and that I think will definitely be uh, a part of most people's when it comes to facility management. We're gonna want something for mechanicals and utilities. Okay, mechanical systems, a sprinkler system, for example, um, things with the, uh, with the gas, as I mentioned, or how about communications? Maybe we wanna map out our fiber optic lines and where everything's at there. So with that system, I'm gonna need some uh, points of interest, like a patch panel for my fiber optic network or something. Uh, furniture and equipment, okay? This is uh, important to us, right? We wanna be able to track, exp especially the, the more expensive is, the more likely we're gonna include that with our points of interest. So for example, um, a piece of equipment, like with our HVAC system, maybe a, a furnace or a, a you know hot water heater or a boiler, we're gonna include that in our equipment. Now, granted, maybe one of those, those might fall under our mechanicals and utilities more likely, but the more, if we have a piece of equipment, say, you know, a piece of medical equipment or a, a large piece of equipment, very expensive, very valuable, or maybe I need to, uh, you know, keep track or route to it, I'm definitely gonna include that in my point of interest. And just to be clear, the point of interest we're talking about here for the most part are fixed. We're gonna include them in our route network. So if it's a mobile piece of equipment that goes from room to room, I'm probably not gonna track that here necessarily with what I'm doing today as a point of interest, but that might be one of part of my asset tracking plan. If I'm doing some real-time asset tracking, uh, definitely I'd wanna include those mobile pieces of equipment there. Updating and editing for our uh, POIs. So there's several different options we can choose on how to keep those current, how to update those. Uh, collector for ArcGIS is one, and that's a, that's a great tool to be able to use on the mobile devices to be able to update those uh, points of interest. Survey123 is another one, very form-centric. Um, field maps is Esri's new um, you know, native application that kind of combines a lot of those other collector, survey one, two, three, navigator. So field maps is definitely a good resource um, to be able to utilize. And then of course, a web browser, we can create different web maps for easy editing and updating of points of interest within the facility. And then ArcGIS Pro, which for the ArcGIS indoors uh, scenario, the points of interest uh, will need to be published from ArcGIS Pro so they can be included uh, into that system and solution. Okay, so let's take a timeout here. And uh, I did have um, one question and I will touch on the questions at the end. And uh, I think we'll have a little time to, to uh, get into those. So we'll, we'll definitely do that. Um, so I wanna look here, um, an example, let's go to ArcGIS Pro here. Um, 
So with this uh, in ArcGIS Pro, I wanted to explore here in this particular project what we've got for some of our point of interest. So here I have a, uh, a nursing home um, here with uh, different residents. I have all these names are made up. This is uh, certainly not uh, real data, but it gives you the example of what this might look like here. So um, I have my people uh, listed here as points of interest. Now you'll notice if I look and I, I open up the data source on people, okay, I'm going to see that this is pulling from my points of interest feature class. So what's interesting with ArcGIS indoors all of my points of interest are stored in one feature class. However, they're separated by definition queries, by filters. So if I look here, I can see on my definition query, I only, I only have selected the category type of people. And that's how I define this layer. And then I'm going to publish that to my uh, ArcGIS indoors portal. And that will just have my, my people in that, in that particular layer. I also have places and things here. So these are, um, again, same thing. If I look at my source, it's coming from uh, points of interest feature class. And there's a definition query set to say, hey, only show me my category type of places and things. OK, and these are very uh, customizable. I can add as many here as I would like. Uh, but I just need to be thinking about the end user. Uh, I want to make, I want to be putting myself in the shoes of the end user to think about how they're going to use it what category would they go to to find you know, uh, point of interest A, point of interest B? I need to be thinking from an end user standpoint. Events is another one um, that can be included there. If there's a certain event at an office or you know, a certain location, we want to include that uh, as well. So, um, so I did want to bring up just the, uh, the, what's interesting as we think about these points of interest. We want to, obviously what's very important for these, and we'll see in our example we show later with the indoors viewer, is the, um, the icon. The icons are so important. So why not take a little time in, you know, when, in, our, in our preparation work and spend a little extra time on these icons and making them look right and making them look uh, intuitive. So in this example, um, I'm in the uh, indoors product files and Esri provides some basic icons and, and uh, have available to us PNG files. But what I've done is in this case, I've taken those a step farther. So if I go up one level, I'll see, uh, let's go up one more. So this is what came uh, places and things and safety and security. However, we were working on a mausoleum cemetery and I decided to add one for memorials. So I just added some icons and then I have my icons for a, a crypt um, or a grave. And I just use the paint.net to be able to edit these. And I start with my blank one and then I just kind of get creative. So it's kind of fun, uh, but it's very important that those are very uh, intuitive for the users, for the end users. Okay, so, um, so another thing, so how to create these. Uh, these were created I started with my, my CAD files, um, imported the CAD data into GIS. There's several different ways we can do that. One is the uh, floor plans to indoors tool. I'm not gonna show that here, but I am gonna touch on it. So import floor plans to indoors geodatabase. That's a, that's a tool that comes with the ArcGIS indoors solution. And that with the settings, we can uh, put our settings in an ex a configurable Excel file, we can import that CAD data directly into uh, indoors, and that will create uh, those points of interest based on what I tell it there. Um, or I could also, if I had polygons already, maybe in GIS format, I can run uh, what's called a feature to point tool in ArcGIS Pro that will create points for each particular room, like in this case, um, if we zoom in, and I probably have points of interest for each bathroom. That's how those were created. It took the room polygon, and I said, hey, generate a point from these features, and that's how I got my point of interest. Now, I had to do that level by level uh, because I didn't want all of my, you know, points of interest to be on the same level. I had to keep them organized, okay? Uh, so that's kind of how those were created. Um, and... Basically, uh, it's important, like I said, to make sure we maintain that floor awareness on those. But again, these could be 
anything. You could use a CSV file that you have for your points of interest. You can import as long as you have a Latin long, and ideally you'd want a Z or at least a field that specifies the floor. You've got enough information there to go ahead and import uh, your points of interest. Okay, so we'll keep moving along here. I wanted to show just a quick snapshot here. In this case, you remember me talking about the POIs being the nerves and the nerve endings of the nervous system. Well, this is an example of our nervous system. This is the routing system for this particular project that we saw. Um, what you'll notice here as I zoom in a little bit, I have my POIs, but what's interesting is I can see the importance of having the Z value on those. You see, I've got some here most of them are on the main level, but we do have a partial basement to this building. So I do have some points of interest in the basement as well. Very important that we have the, the Z values uh, represented uh, in our points of interest so we can make sure our, our system is floor aware, okay? So let's take a look uh, at the indoor solution here, okay? Um, what I want to look at here is just to take, uh, kind of explore some of the features and functionality um, that we've got available to us. So here, um, what I can look at is I wanted to show in this particular case, I'm going to do a refresh here. I want to show how it can be um, utilized where we can easily kind of find and be able to use these uh, points of interest in a real world scenario. So for this example, uh, I've got my building selected up here and this is the ArcGIS Indoors viewer here that I'm looking at. And I can toggle between buildings. Um, in this case, it, there's a, uh, they're both named the same up in my selector, but um, we can name buildings throughout a campus and you can have all of your buildings available there in the dropdown. And then in this case, like I mentioned, there's a partial basement here. So when I click on LB, it's only showing me that basement, but if I click on level one, then I can see the entire uh, main level of the nursing home in this case. So that's that's the, my, my building level selector there. Um, but what's important to me, um, and really what I wanna be able to do is let's, I really wanna be able to search. So up here I can, I can type in, I'm gonna type in a last name of a person and uh, let's click on that person. It tells me right where they are located at. And again, this would this would be this would have been published from my people layer that I showed you earlier, okay. And we're going to say, um, okay, Mr. Hoffman, I'm interested in finding directions uh, from somewhere to his office. So in this case, I'm going to I'm going to just select 19 as one of my POIs that I already knew uh, where that was at. But just to give you an idea on the directions here, now I've got routable turn by turn directions to that particular location. Okay, and it's gonna tell me, it's gonna walk me through on how to find those areas, even from building to building in this situation. So very, very helpful to be able to have that uh, information available. So where do the, uh, the POIs, let's jump back here. Um, where do those categories come into play and all those icons? Well, what's really handy is I have the explore functionality here. Um, and I have the explore tool. So I can easily come in here and explore any point of interest in my entire map and my entire campus really in this situation. So I only have a couple people entered in this one. And these I'm gonna, for example, I'm gonna say these are, these are staff. So again, I could select on them. It's gonna show me right where they're located at. Um, and I could pull up information. Then you'll see on the right, there's attribute information that comes up. And related items, I can also see that. So it'll tell me typically uh, what floors are associated or what rooms are associated with that particular point of interest. So very helpful there. Uh, another one is places and things. I can explore different places and things there that I've got these categorized into more detail. So like maintenance, I can look at my maintenance items. Again, it'll take me right, right to those particular things that I'm interested in. Uh, let's take a look at safety and security. Okay, this is one important category to look at. Uh, with safety and security, I, let's say I have some flammable materials. Okay, those are very important. If I've got a, a fire situation or emergency that I need to respond to, that's going to tell the fire department exactly where those flammable materials are at uh, or hazardous materials. And then I can easily pull up my directions and take me right to it. And if I had a a kiosk in the lobby that's even 
even more handy is it's uh, defaults to my location there in the lobby, which I'll show you here in another example. Let's jump over to the last example here would be a cemetery mausoleum. This is in kiosk mode. So again, ArcGIS indoors comes, the viewer comes with the two modes. You've got the kiosk mode, and then you've got the general viewer mode, which was what we were just looking at with the nursing home project. Uh, here's the kiosk mode I have here. Again, I could explore. In this case, I wanna explore memorials, okay? And I'm gonna explore, uh, let's explore niches. And I can select one of those. It gives me information on the right-hand side about that particular niche. And then I'm going to get directions and it's gonna take me right to that particular location. So very helpful that again, that explore tool. And again, we have the ability to either explore this way or we can do a search for a particular name or a location there on where that particular person is. So I'm gonna look for, some of these are in the yard, but I'm gonna look for one that's, uh, this one is in the particular, in the mausoleum. And again, on the right-hand side, there's all my related information to that particular uh, burial location. I can also navigate between my floors. It's given me a warning here. It says, hey, wait a minute, the one you found is on floor two, but you navigated to floor one. So it's nice to have that uh, functionality as well. As well. So uh, that kind of wraps it up for the demo purposes there. Let's jump back to our, uh, our slideshow here. Um, so we do have some more webinars coming up. Um, just to touch on those, that's today is the first one, but this is part one of a three-part series. We're going to come back in July. We're going to look at floor transitions, which is your stairways, your elevators, how to create those. And then we'll also talk in October about creating and publishing route networks. Okay. Um, just a little bit more about uh, us before we get into the questions here. Uh, we, like I said, offer data collection. We do the implementation and training workshops we provide for ArcGIS indoors and implementation, and then also kickstart packages of those where we do both the implementation as well as some training for folks. And then we also have some cloud hosting and maintenance uh, options for folks if they want us to be uh, maintaining their um, facilities maps and be able to update floor plans when there's renovations, things like that. Uh, and then our managed services, which is kind of the, uh, you know, all-in-one package. If you want to outsource that work, we can certainly uh, discuss that and be available for, for helping you with that. So let's jump into um, the questions now. If you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat box or in the, excuse me, in the Q&A section there. And uh, we'll be sure to get to those here. That looks like we've got one. Uh, so we've got, can you talk a little about how to highlight different types of spaces on the GIS indoor map. In order to do that, do you need to edit in CAD first to make sure each room's polys are closed so you can fill the color in the GIS indoor map? That's a great question. Um, so to expand a little bit more on that, yes, you do need to close your polygons. Let's go back to ArcGIS Pro quick. And let's look at our first map here with the CAD files. Very important, I appreciate you pointing this out. So. Let's turn off our GIS layers and just look at our CAD layers for a second. So we do need closed polygons. That's very important. And what you'll find is a lot of times the CAD uh, will not have those closed polygons. Now, there are some uh, functions in the import floor plans tools with the indoor solution that you can tell it uh, if you want doors open or closed. Um, and, and that might help. I honestly, I haven't ran it enough to be able to tell you whether you'd need those, but from, if you're just going to bring it in from GIS polygons, or you're, you're going to have to have a closed polygon if you're in your CAD data, which is, is very helpful. And sometimes those are hard to find in the CAD data. What I have found is if you can get BIM files and BIM data with your indoors, um, with your CAD information, BIM data can be converted into uh, Esri's geodatabase format, which you can then get closed polygons from your BIM data. So I've done that and that seems to be a pretty good workflow as well if I don't have uh, clean CAD information to, to start with. Uh, another question here, can we define the Google Maps in the indoors? Um, so I think um, maybe you're asking if you can integrate that uh, Google Maps in the indoors. Um, so I'm not sure how, how you could incorporate 
uh, Google Maps with that situation. I do know you can incorporate any of Esri's base maps and you can even uh, include routing on Esri's, um, you know, online, ArcGIS online location uh, routing tools. And you can, you can kind of connect those and join those with your campus routing. Um, so you can go from the outdoor level into the indoor level and vice versa. Uh, but I'm not sure on the Google Maps side of things how, to, how that would incorporate. So, okay, well, it looks like that's all the questions we have for today. And we are just wrapping, just coming to our time limit here. We had a half hour allotted for this webinar. So um, really uh, appreciate everybody. Looks like um, I really appreciate everybody coming today. Uh, again, a very important aspect of our facilities is the indoors. Um, and we do offer uh, training specific to this. We also have some uh, YouTube videos available. Um, let me just jump back there. I don't know if I included that. Um, I had, uh, if you look at our uh, cloudpointgeo.com website, the indoor mapping, um, that will give you some more information there. We also have a YouTube channel if you want to go there, uh, Cloud Point Geospatial. And we do cover some specifics on ArcGIS indoors and indoor mapping. And one of those, uh, I think there is some information on points of interest. But we are continually trying to update those and keep those current for you, especially as Esri rolls out uh, new versions and updates for the indoor solution. So, all right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We hope you found some good benefit here and uh, appreciate it. And hope everybody has a, has a good day. Thanks.